The previous video showed how the expected utility of taking certain actions in certain states depends on both the likelihood of different outcomes for each action and on the expected utility of neighboring states. For example, the reason that going right in this state has an expected utility of 0 0.918 is that the state you are most likely to reach has a high utility and the other two states you have a chance of reaching have utilities of 0 0.660 and if you bounce back here from hitting the wall 0 0.918 respectively. Of course to calculate this result we had to already know the utility of this state and also know the utility of the state beneath it. How can an agent learn these utility values from scratch? Temporal difference learning provides a way to learn these values from scratch. Specifically, an agent starts by assuming that all actions in all states have a default utility value of, say, zero, and then updates these estimates by looking at the differences that it sees between its expected values and the values it actually encounters. A specific algorithm that accomplishes this is Q-learning. Q-learning depends on the following equation. The value of taking an action at time t in a state at time t is updated to be that same value added to the following. Alpha times the quantity of a reward received on the next time step plus gamma times the maximum Q value in the following state across all possible actions you can take in that state minus the Q value for the state you're in and the action you just chose. Let me once again go over what every component of this equation represents. This backwards arrow is an update. This value will be replaced with this new quantity here. So you take a value and you make a slight change to it. These two equations are equivalent. This one perhaps reminds you of code in high level languages you've used before. This alpha parameter is a learning rate. It needs to be some small value between 0 and 1, though preferably closer to 0 than 1. And it indicates how much we update our utility values every time we take an action. This is the immediate reward that an agent just received. This is a discount factor which encourages an agent to seek out rewards sooner rather than later. For example, it is common to set this to a value such as 0 0.9 or even 0 0.99 and the effect of doing that makes the agent assign a smaller reward 
to receiving a reward of five in the future versus immediately. This expression here is the maximum Q value in the next state across all different actions. What this means is that from some state that the agent was in at a given time t, it took an action. That action led to some other state, s t plus 1. Now, the agent currently maintains q values for each possible action it could take in that state. It will look at all of those available actions from that state, and whichever of them has the highest utility value will become the value of this whole expression here. You then subtract from that the Q value of the action from the state that you were just in. Now, what does this do? Let's see this in action. This is a program that you yourself will be developing in an upcoming project. It allows a human to control an agent in the grid world and see how the Q values are updated when using Q learning. In this particular example, the cost for each action is minus 0.04, as was noted in previous videos, and the learning rate is 0.5, that's alpha. The discount factor is 1. That means that we do not favor recent actions over later ones. This makes the update easier to follow and should allow you to track these changes yourself. Now watch what happens when I press up. I moved up from the state in the lower left corner. Therefore, the utility of performing that action was updated based off of the equation that you just saw. Because all of the utilities in the state that I'm currently in have a current estimate of zero, and because it cost 0 0.04 to move from that position to this new one, the utility in, of the action I just did was made smaller, hence negative. Watch as I do more actions. Up, right, 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 and then the final action you always take in these terminal states is simply an exit that updates the utility value there. Notice that when you move to a new state, the action in the state which you previously occupied is updated. But in that final terminal state, I had to do an additional action to experience the reward of plus one. Therefore, all of the actions I took still have a current expected, or rather estimate, of minus 0 0.02. Now, over time, these will update to be proper values. I am going to move this other direction now and experience the bad reward. The reason that the coloring changed is that all of the coloring here is relative, and now that such a large negative reward has been encountered, the other negative rewards don't seem as bad in comparison. Now, if I were a rational agent, I would want to choose actions that had high utility. From my current estimate in the lower left-hand corner, it looks as though moving either left or down will be better than moving up or right, which both have negative utilities. Now, our perspective tells us that this is wrong because we can see that that's just a wall. But the agent doesn't know this. It just sees its immediate Q values. Fortunately, it can update its Q values by taking actions. If I move left, I don't actually change my state, but now going left has a negative utility associated with it. Similarly, going down, assigns a negative utility there as well, making all of the available actions look equal again. I'm going to keep moving to different states that have high utilities, and we'll see how things change over time.
I'll go up, right, sorry, left, and now down looks best. So I go down here, and now the best action could be down, left, or right. Let's try down. Well, now down is unappealing. Let's try left. Well, now left is unappealing. The best action is right. So I have to exhaust all of the actions that look good at the moment. And then I end up going in circles since none of these actions are really great. I just haven't explored them yet. From here, I'll go up. And from here, going up looks good. Now going to the right, up, down. I'm back here again. Left and right look good. Now up looks more appealing. I can go left, up, now right. All zeros again, except for going to the right. So I'll try down first, then up, and then left. And you'll see that as I visit states more and more, the fact that there is a cost to moving around gradually makes staying in the same states I've been to before seem less and less appealing. The algorithm thus pushes the agent to try visiting states that it has never visited before. And this will cause it to experience both good and bad outcomes. So here, I will go down, and then down, then right, and now all zeros again, down, right, up. And now that was a bad outcome. And here, because I've already experienced this negative outcome once before, the consequence of that negative outcome is pushed into the up action of the state I was just in. Therefore, bad outcomes do eventually propagate their consequences to states that lead to them. Similarly, good outcomes will eventually propagate their outcomes to states that lead to them as well. As we will see as I go through these steps here, going right still looks good in this state, but now that I go there, it doesn't look good anymore. That means the next time I encounter that state, I'll be able to benefit from that knowledge. Right, right, down, right. Here I'm in this state again. Going up clearly looks bad now. I'll try going left. And from here, going right still looks good. Going right, going down. Well, a lot of equal states. Let's try going left. They're all equal, let's try going up. Well, from here we can go down, and now this way, this way, and I'm going in circles again. But every time I move around, the information gets a little bit more accurate, or at least changes in a way that pushes me to explore more things. And we'll see how, if I were to do this for long enough, I could eventually learn the values you saw in the previous video. In particular, I'm going to speed through the next several evaluations. You can see now how taking what seemed to be the best action each opportunity eventually led to me learning utilities that encouraged me to keep going along a path that led to the best outcome. Now we should of course keep in mind that this demonstration did not involve any control problems such as unreliable actions. So an agent learning to control itself in this world for real would have to account for those unexpected outcomes and would also have to deal with what we will call the exploration versus exploitation trade-off, which is discussed in the next video.